Hello bookworms and friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're back. I'm so glad you're tuning in for a new video segment. I like to call what is Rachel reading? I don't know if I'll forever call it that. I feel like it might be more of like a what to read, books you should read, what you might like that Rachel likes. Basically, I am a huge bookworm and avid reader. I don't watch as many shows and movies as I do consume books on a monthly basis. The last month I'm gonna be going over talking about books was a big one. Part of that is because of quarantine. The other part of that is because I have just kind of been in a creative rut. And I feel like a lot of the times when I'm having brain block, I can go to literature and I can find a lot of meaning and purpose in myself that I feel a little bit disconnected to. I personally love to read. I loved to read as a child. I kind of lost touch with reading in high school and college, mostly because a lot of the reading I was doing was educationally required of me. So picking up a book for fun was not amusing at all. But especially since graduating college, I have gotten a lot more into reading. My favorite genres of reading are fiction, classics, anything that's fiction with a commentary on culture is right down my alley. Some of my favorite authors are John Steinbeck, Walt Whitman, Donna Tartt, Am I allowed to say Stephanie Meyer? Am I allowed to say JK Rowling? When I do tend to touch on things like fantasy and science fiction, Stephanie Meyer and JK Rowling have a lot to do with it. But today I'm gonna to be going over with you all the books that I read in the month of May. I'm gonna be breaking them down and telling you the gist of the story. That will kind of help you understand if you might be interested in reading it. I'm also going to cover topics such as length, author, date published, and overall genre. So with all that being said, let's dive in. The so first up I'm going to be talking about Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. As I mentioned earlier, Steinbeck is one of my favorite authors. I think that the way he speaks about the culture at large and humanity is just absolutely breathtaking. He has an honesty about him, but also just an absolute brilliance and beauty that's very ethereal, but very raw. So I'm pretty sure I read Up Mice and Men in high school, but I wanted to go ahead and have a copy for myself because it is such a renowned book in the culture at large. This book rings in at just over 100 pages at about 107, depending on which version you have. It's a really easy read, and most of the versions that you can find at a Goodwill or a Half Price Books are a little bit older or are donated school copies. So each of the copies that I came across already had a lot of life to them, which I love about my books. Much like most of Steinbeck's novels, this one takes place in the valleys of California. It's the story of an unlikely pair, George, who is small, hardworking, and quick, and Lenny, a bigger guy with the mind and heart of a child. It's not blatantly said in the book, but as the reader, you're interpreting that Lenny actually has a disability. This book has a way of commenting on the way that the disabled are treated in society that is amazing, heartbreaking, but amazing. It also has a lot to say about different income levels and gender roles that America puts on its citizens. I think I read this one in about two days, so it's a really quick and easy read. And even if you read it in high school, I think it's worth reading again as an adult. Next up, I'm talking about I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. A lot of you are probably aware of what's been going on in the media recently with the Black Lives Matter movement, and I think it's our duty as white people to be informed on the black experience. One of my favorite ways that I have been taking on that perspective is by reading books by black authors, and Maya Angelou is one of my favorites. I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings is one of Maya Angelou's autobiographies, this one taking place in her childhood to early teens. This book is just under 300 pages, and I think I read it in about three to four days. This is also a very popular read in high school literature classes, so I think I picked up a school used copy from my half price books. It's a joyful, painful, memorable story that I think really helps you gain perspective on the treatment of others in society. One of my favorite things about Maya Angelou is that she's able to talk about the black experience, her own life with such dignity and beauty while also being heartbreaking. The whole first half of this book, I was really into it. I was really excited. And then the latter half, I was gasping for breath at some of the chapters. It's also a great book that touches on things like gender roles, family, the American society. Being written by a woman who grew up in the American South, it's a really, really important read to help you understand perspective of the history and where you live. Also, this book is recommended by Oprah Winfrey, and if that's not reason enough for you to read it, I don't know what is. Next up, I am talking about The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. This was a book that was on a bunch of 100 books you should read before you die lists, and I didn't really understand why when I was looking into it, but of course, one of my favorite pastimes is just wandering the halls of half price books in Goodwill, and one day I came across this copy and I decided to pick it up. Without knowing it, I read a lot of books in the month of May that kind of help you understand the other's perspective. This is a book narrated by 
a boy named Christopher who has autism. I'm going to tell a little bit of the story, but I think from the cover and from the name of the book, you can definitely interpret this. One day, Christopher is walking in this neighborhood when he comes across one of his neighbor's dogs murdered in his front yard. And the whole book is him trying to solve the mystery while also trying to understand and find comfort in his world. At the same time, his parents are divorced because of his mom's assumed death. It's a great fiction book that creates a beautiful, lovable, complex protagonist main character. It's just under 230 pages and was a really quick read. I think I also read this one in about three days. It's also based in England, which was really fun to read. <laughs> so if you're someone that loves mysteries, fictions, or family dramas, I can't recommend this one enough. Next up, I read The Secret History by Donna Tartt. You might recognize Donna Tartt's name from The Goldfinch, which I read last year in love. It's one of my top five all-time favorite books. And because I loved it so much, I knew I wanted to read some of her other titles, like The Secret History. Donna Tartt writes with a level of elegance that almost is Dead Poets Society-esque, but also is very John Green in the way that she's able to channel the early 20s, late youth mindset. And I was a sucker for John Green my entire high school career. So finding someone that kind of takes John Green's prose and elevates it a little bit is a great thing to have. It also has a touch of like sharp objects, Gillian Flynn feeling, because ultimately it is a secret a mystery the whole time. It's about a group of students going to a New England college. I don't want to give too much away, but imagine very much Dead Poet Society group of friends underneath a really mysterious but eccentric teacher studying things that might not be conventional. It's really great, really gripping, and honestly really melodramatic, which is kind of right up my alley. I will say the pacing of it was a little slow, so for the first half of the book it kind of took me a while to get through it. I think this one took me about seven to eight days to read, but ultimately by the end of it I I was completely hooked. I loved the storyline. I loved the prose and I loved the writing. The Secret History is just under 560 pages, so it is definitely a little bit longer to get through, but totally worth it. The chapters in this book are also extremely long. So if you are going to read it, I do not advise setting up a reading plan chapter by chapter as the chapters are pretty long and a lot to digest. If you loved The Goldfinch or any of the other things I just mentioned, I highly recommend this fiction thriller. Next up, and this might be the one I'm most embarrassed to talk about. Breaking Dawn. I read the entire Twilight series in the month of April because guys, quarantine was heavy. COVID was scary and I honestly needed a little escape. So COVID was hard. Twilight was wonderful, and I think TikTok was kind of getting to me, and I just really missed this story. I am someone who avidly loves Twilight, and I think I might even do a whole video in the future talking about my journey with Twilight. I honestly love this series, and I love these characters, besides Jacob. We hate Jacob. So yes, I did read basically all of Breaking Dawn part two in the month of May and really got a lot out of it. Breaking Dawn is my least favorite book in the series. I think my favorite is the first book and then Eclipse. And I actually appreciate New Moon a lot more than I used to, especially because of what it does for Edward and Bella's relationship. I'm not gonna go into a whole Twilight talk right now, but yes, I read Breaking Dawn part two. You guys are all pretty familiar with what Twilight is, but if you're not, it's a story about a human and a vampire that fall in love. It's very melodramatic. It's very existential and I'm really into it. Team Edward for life, unashamed. Yes, Breaking Dawn is the longest of the books and it is 754 pages long. So if you're trying to dive in deep, can't recommend this one enough. And finally, the book that I read last month and I'm currently still reading is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This book is, whoo, heavy. The book kind of hops back and forth in time, but is set around World War I, Nazi Germany, and invaded Paris. The two main characters are a 12-year-old blind girl and a German orphan named Werner. I'm not too far into the book yet, but I absolutely love these characters. I can already tell I'm going to cry a lot. It's taken me a little while to get really hooked by this book, but I'm currently on page 150 and I want to pick it up every single hour of the day and keep reading. But something I love about this book is that it is telling the perspective of the war from both sides. And I think something about conflict that is really complex is that you really have to understand the humanity on both sides of the issue. I'm not saying that Germany was right at all, but I am saying that there were children who were drafted into the war and were told that this was great and this was going to build their country and that they were doing the right thing. And I think that's what makes Werner, the German child in this book, so relatable is that he's just being 
drafted into this with really no concept except the fact that all of his best friends also love Hitler and also are so excited about it. If you've ever seen Jojo Rabbit, I do not think the humor and the cuteness of that movie at all relates to this. But if you liked Jojo Rabbit and related with the character of Jojo, I think you would actually find a lot of beauty in this book. It is an extremely dense and beautifully written book. So I have not been flying through it because I'm trying to appreciate each sentence in each chapter the way that it was written. I am really captivated by this novel and I'm so excited to finish it. This is also on a bunch of read this book before you die lists and it's won a Pulitzer Prize. So I kind of had to read it. This book is also exactly 530 pages. So it's also definitely a longer read, but definitely worth it. So if you love historical fiction, this is also a great choice. I know that was a lot of books and it looks like I have a lot of books because I do in my household, but I've actually been able to find a bunch of affordable copies of books at places like Half Price Books and Goodwill. I think that supporting authors and buying paper, tangible held books is so important. I think that holding a copy of a book and appreciating it and reading it is really a lost art and I get so much value out of building my book collection in my home. Books are like little friends that you just get to explore and spend time with for a long period of time and it's so sweet for me to reflect on the last year that I've been reading a lot and remembering each month or each season by the books I was reading. I think there's also this thrill that comes from finding other friends that are book addicts and getting to talk to them about some of your favorite titles. For example, I have some of the sweetest memories from early high school of me and my best friend reading the Hunger Games series and going to all the midnight premieres. But getting to share in the journey of walking through pages of a book with another human is so beautiful and provides so much connection and a deeper insight into who you are as a person, how you think, and how you process as the world around you. So if you are not a huge reader, I challenge you to pick up one of these books over the next season. I think also a lot of the titles that I talked about, The Song Breaking Dawn, are really beautiful at opening perspective and sharing sides of the world that you might not be able to experience on a regular basis. I hope that you guys found that video helpful. I hope that you found some new titles that you want to grab next time you're at the library or at the bookstore and add them to your own collection. As always, please like and subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to know first thing when I'm creating new videos. And for now, Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm.